I wanted to create a place where women can come to be empowered, empowered by other women. Women Helping Women, with interviews of extraordinary and inspiring leaders, artists, celebrities, and change makers who have overcome great challenges to become incredibly successful and then give back to others so that they can love and believe in themselves, follow their bliss, and shine their light. In this way, we can truly be the change we wish to see in the world. Welcome to the Orgina Rose Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I am so excited to introduce to you my next guest. He is dubbed Lord of the Strings and is also a bit of a cross uh, where Braveheart meets Last of the Mohicans at Woodstock. So he is an award-winning Celtic fusion violinist and also Native American flautist. Please welcome Arvel Bird. Thank you, Orgina. Thank you. It's Thank you so here. much for being here. Absolutely. It's such a pleasure. I love, love, love your music. I love both the violin. It's just, it's pristine in its sound. And then also the Native American flauta. So you really are wearing a bit of a couple of hats at least. I am. And that pristine sound comes from 11 years of classical training. Ah, there you go. There you go. And it shows through that, that discipline that you've had. So tell us a little bit about how did you come to play the violin and the native, you know, the flutes and so on. Well, uh, I was nine years old when I took up the violin. Okay. I told my mother I wanted to play the trumpet. <laughs> you know how that went over. Yeah. She frowned and said, Arvo, <laughs> we have a violin under the bed. You either play that or you don't play anything. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, well, look at that. <laughs> so I got the violin out and I, you know, opened the case and mm -hmm. smelled funny and <laughs> but, um, wasn't love at first sight, huh? It, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, I would say that it was my first violin teacher that uh, uh, made me start loving the violin mm. and loving music, too. It ah. was going to those lessons was an exciting event for me, and it was magical. Mm -hmm. And so I looked forward to that magic every, every week because Beautiful. it was something that I didn't have in my family life. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the violin became my refuge mm -hmm. as a young boy mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of the, the chaos, the confusion, anger, upset in my family. Sure. I could go in my room, shut the door, mm -hmm. and play the and violin, play. and uh, you know, I could be away from all of yeah. that uh, mm -hmm. confusion and upset that I was going through as a young boy. I so identify with that. That was the stage for me, the theater. I could go on stage and kind of escape from all of, you know, and go into this other world that was magical. So, uh -huh. so I really, really identify with that. And so how did the Native American flute come in for you then? Well, uh, so as I, an adult then, I, I went into professional music playing as a violinist. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that, uh, after 11 years of classical training, then I wanted to expand and try other genres of music because mm. it looked so much fun playing those other genres. <laughs> and for me at that right. point, just music was those little notes on a piece of paper. Right, right. And so I knew it had to be more than that. Mm, big well, difference. Well, you know, that led me to folk music, Appalachian Mountain music, bluegrass music, country mm -hmm. music, blues and jazz. And uh, eventually I wound up in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm. At the time I was playing uh, the violin for Glenn Campbell. Wow. But I wanted to get more involved in the music industry, so mm -hmm. my wife and I moved to Nashville, and I started a music uh, studio there, a recording studio, because I wanted to become a studio musician but had no experience. Uh -huh. So I thought if I start a studio, I'll get music. Uh, experience. What a great idea, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Worked yeah. out that way. Because, sort of, yeah. You know, the studio kind of took over my life. Yeah, it's a whole other beast, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always knew that I was a Southern Paiute uh, mixed blood on my mother's side because she was Southern Paiute and my grandmother was full blood Southern Paiute from Southern Utah. Mm -hmm. But uh, my mother never talked about it uh, and never was proud of it okay. because when she grew up, it was a, a stigma. It yeah. was, there was prejudice, there was hardship. Sure. There was. Uh, she told me she and uh, her brother, the one that I'm named after, mm -hmm. uh, had to fight every kid in, t in school just to be left alone. Wow. So that's how tough it was. Okay. So she wanted something better for me. Right. So she never talked about it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but as I was in this recording studio making music for other people, mm -hmm. one of my clients came in to do a Native American CD. And so mm. that got me reinterested in my own heritage. And as I got into the community of Native America, mixed blood people there in, in um, Middle Tennessee, mm -hmm. uh, I began to 
form an affinity for this uh, this heritage. Yes. Their way of life, yes. past history. Mm -hmm. um, it's just everything just resonated with me. So uh, I, I began to re record my own music mm -hmm. at that point, and I wanted to play the Native American. I wanted added it to my music. So, but I didn't play it myself. So prior to that, you were not, even though you wanted to become a recording artist, you were doing other people's music first. Yes. Interesting, isn't that? Yeah. Yeah. So it took connecting with this, your heritage a bit, and this whole other music genre to it, finally do that. It did because, uh, and following my heart, following mm -hmm. my inner voice, because yes. my inner voice was really kick in my butt, you know. <laughs> As it and, does. <laughs> you know, you've got all this music in you. Yes. And it's time for you to bring it out. Yes. I'd actually watched a, a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, die of cancer, mm. who was a brilliant artist. Mm -hmm. The only problem with him, he, he was a perfectionist, and so nothing he did was ever done. Wow. So even though his, his artwork would send you into a different dimension, he wouldn't release it to the public. So as I watched oh him goodness. dying in the hospital, mm -hmm. it occurred to me that he was more afraid to live than to die. Mm. And so mm. that was a calling, uh, you know, a wake-up call for me that yeah. I've got all this music in me. How yes. much longer do I have? Yes. I better get it out yes. before it eats me up. Absolutely. And there is a saying, don't die with the music in you. And uh, there are a lot of amazing artists, musical, gifted, talented people who do exactly that. Mm -hmm. So great that you got the wake-up call and you heard it and you heeded it. Right. So huge, huge, huge. And I'm so excited because you're going to share some of your wonderful uh, work with us today. And you have a number of CDs that you have done. How many would you say you've done so far? Uh, I started my own record label in Nashville called Singing Wolf Records, and I've released over that. 23 wow. CDs. Beautiful. And that's only been in the last 11 or 12 years. Wow. So it's been two or three a year. Uh, that's pretty. I've been busy. You've been busy. You are. Plus touring full time. <laughs> touring all the time. You are everywhere. I love seeing that as well. So that's really, really exciting. And you're going to share, of course, a little bit with our audience today live, but also you have a lovely, one of my favorites that uh, you'd like to make sure everyone hears I'd as well. I'd like to give away the most requested song from this CD right here, hmm. from the animal. This is my original Animal Totems. This is what got my musical career, solo career, rolling, mm. was this instrumental CD because this music was composed to represent the spirit or totem powers of birds and animals. Mm. So you see the bear, you see the turtle, you see, you feel the horse running, the energy mm. of the horse, and, and you feel the red-tailed hawk soaring. Mm. Your heart soars with the red-tailed hawk. So that's, right. it's, it's uh, music that people really connect to. Yes. And so I'd like to, uh, to give everybody a chance to hear the red tail hawk. Beautiful. It's a very um, beautiful song. It truly is. It, it is absolutely one of my favorites. So really excited that uh, everyone's going to get to download that and get connected with your music. And it really is incredibly powerful. Which of these would you say is your favorite? <laughs> I know that's always hard <laughs> for well, artists to do that. Because uh, I, I was only beginning to play the flute when I recorded this. Mm -hmm. And there's like four songs that my flute fit on. But by the time I recorded my second Animal Totems, I was really well into playing the flute, and I was pushing the envelope of what the Native American flute can do. Mm. I was putting it into contemporary styles of music like blues shuffle and um, Latin jazz, Ooh. Um, Ooh. cinematic stuff. Love that. And so mm -hmm. this one actually was the CD that uh, won me a Native American Music Award here in the United States for Excellent. Artist of the Year. Excellent, so yes. So I'm very mm -hmm. proud of this one. Beautiful, beautiful. So. Um, these are probably my favorite, although mm -hmm. this was a new one that I just <laughs> recorded last year mm -hmm. in a cave in southern Utah. Wow. That's why it's called Cave, cave uh, Secret of Cave Lakes. Because mm. the flute gave me the melodies and the cave gave me the reverb and echo. So you actually recorded it there? In the, in the, <gasps> in the cave with oh a digital, um, you know, remote. Uh, the beauty recorded. of technology. Isn't yeah. it great? It's fantastic. Oh, I can't wait to hear some of that myself. It was, it was wonderful. Yeah, just very soothing, mm -hmm. very... Mm -hmm. Uh, calming. Yes. So that was my idea with that whole CD when I went in there. Then I've got these two s similar CDs because they're only six songs each and they're both unplugged. I love it, unplugged. <laughs> that means that I'm playing the guitar, I'm singing, playing the violin or the fiddle, the flutes, the whistles. Oh, and my wife Kimberly is playing, singing harmony and, and playing the Irish hand drum, the boron. Oh, that's
That's awesome. So these oh, I are, love it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of a new direction for me because I wanted to feature more of my vocals yes. in these new CDs, which you've been helping me with. Yes, <laughs> and you've done a wonderful, wonderful job with. So I love that you now have those on CD as well. I, I'm, I'm loving it too. Fantastic. Loving, loving. So when we come back, we're going to hear you actually playing live, yes? Yes, uh, actually a couple of songs in, in a medley. I'm going to play a uh, Scottish Lament mm, okay. that was recorded for my uh, Titanic CD. And then I, I just love Bach. You know, mm. I grew up classically playing Bach, yes. so I'm going to segue into not a violin concerto, but a, a piece for the cello ah. the G and, and G. So okay. it's the Bach G uh, concerto for cello. Oh, I love it. So we get a bit of your roots and a bit of who you are today. Exactly. Excellent. All right. So make sure you come back and hear Arvel Bird. Are you ready to completely catapult your life and business fast? Want to step into the spotlight and finally be seen as the expert and star that you are? Ready to have more fun in your business and work smarter, not harder? Then you're in the right place. Step into the spotlight, shine your light, and be the star you are in the Celebrity VIP Day. If you're done being the best kept secret, Want to reach more people and ready to stop working so hard with little payoff? Step up into your celebrity. In this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, you'll get the star treatment. Have a TV talk show interview guaranteed. Be ready to rock the media and interview on national TV, radio, and magazines, and so much more. Your fabulous, fun-filled day includes hair and makeup by a top Hollywood makeup artist to the stars, professional photos by a top Hollywood photographer, exclusive VIP lunch at a luxurious castle, a guaranteed interview with Orgina Rose, walk the red carpet, and enjoy a gala reception. As a bonus, you'll receive four power-packed live training calls to prepare you to truly shine in the spotlight and maximize your appearances and a free ticket to the Soul Awards Gala in Hollywood, honoring extraordinary women who are shining their light by helping others. You're now a recognized celebrity and reaching more people than you ever have before. It's all possible with the Celebrity VIP Day. Only 12 spots available for this exclusive experience, so don't wait. Apply now. And now, feast your eyes and your ears on Arvel Bird.
Oh, that was so, so wonderful. Thank you so much, Arvel, for coming and sharing your music. And we will be right back. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for being with us today on our show. I really hope that there was something shared that really helps you shine your biggest and brightest light. Please stop by again, like us on Facebook, tweet us, all of those good things, and most importantly, please always remember, it's all about love. <laughs>